Trump suggesting that he is willing to make cuts to Social Security and Medicare. Entitlements ever be on your plate? At some point, they will be. To defeat Trump, we need a nominee who has always fought to protect Social Security. We are not going to cut the programs that millions of seniors and people with disabilities depend upon. If they vote to cut Social Security, they may well not be returning to Washington. Bernie Sanders there doubling down on his stance on Social Security in a new ad. He is targeting President Trump's openness to make cuts to the program. Here to expand on this is political reporter at HuffPost, Daniel Marins. He joins us now via Skype. Dan, welcome back to the show. It's good to see you. Great to see you. It's great to be here. Absolutely. So Sanders, is that part of his closing pitch down there in Iowa that he's making to voters, particularly trying to draw? I know that ad was talking about Trump, but in the previous times and last time that we talked, it was about Biden's record on Social Security. So maybe it's a dual pronged attack that he's trying to remind everybody on. What do you think? That's that's a great point, Sagar. Uh -huh. It's definitely a dual pronged attack. And I think one of the reasons you can tell is there, there's a there's a there's a key point in the script in that ad where the narrator says we need a nominee who has a clear record on Social Security of standing up for Social Security. And that right there is absolutely an explicit reference to his weeks long tussle with Joe Biden over their records on Social Security. One of the things I note in my in my write up of that ad and, and I I was able to report it out first, is that Iowans sort of famously don't like negative campaigning. Mm -hmm. They are really into sort of the, the, the wholesome themes of campaigning, but they've also had to be inundated by this stuff for months. And at least on the Democratic side, the, the conventional wisdom is that Iowans are not necessarily that that this can backfire very easily and the thing that i sometimes hear especially privately from campaign officials in a crowded race like this with a favored establishment figure like joe biden is a fear of redoing the 2004 primary where dick gephardt and howard dean sort of went at each other so viciously and establishment favorite john Kerry walked away with it I think there's a sense in, in, in the quarters of, of someone like Bernie Sanders, to some extent even weirdly Pete Buttigieg, that you don't really want to go quite so hard on the air against mm. a rival uh, or it could backfire. That's interesting. Talk about the surrogate game on the ground there. Obviously, all the senators are stuck here in Washington dealing with impeachment. Um, how has that been playing? I know you've been following Sanders in particular. Have the surrogates been drawing crowds? Has that been an effective strategy for him, or do you think impeachment has been slowing him down there? Yeah, I mean, look, there's no question that if Bernie Sanders himself were down here, that the crowds would be much bigger. Last weekend, it was him teaming up with Ocasio-Cortez and going to places like Sioux City, Iowa, which are not exactly uh, liberal bastions. I was in Iowa City, for example, last night. I was also in West Liberty, which is a small rural town of 4,000 people, I should say, two nights ago. Uh, and last night, I, I was at a rally in Des Moines. We're, we're talking about crowds of, of a couple hundred people, for example, in Iowa City. He has a, a, a sort of Mexican folk revival band from East L.A. that is traveling across the state with him. And it's, it's really kind of a unique sort of atmosphere for a political rally because these are people who are singing very loud, boisterous, uh, political themed songs engaging members of the audience and then you know in the in the case of I, I suppose it was wednesday night you had michael moore and naomi klein showing up you had a very i would say liberal crowd in iowa city that was excited to be there that was doing call and response with some of the speakers and, and what have you but jane sanders also missed her flight on wednesday night she was there, though, on Thursday in Des Moines. And I have to say, one of the things I found so interesting about her speech, and that was at an event in Des Moines that was targeted at Latinos. They have a, a sort of a, a, a Latino focus group called Unidos con Bernie. We're united with Bernie. A lot of the people that, that show up at those events are just ordinary Bernie fans. But I did meet people sort of 
Latino members of the kind of Des Moines community who, who you don't necessarily think of Iowa as a Latino juggernaut in the model of Nevada or California, mm-hmm. but it, it is a state where people flock there for agricultural and industrial jobs, and it's now 6% Latino, and there are people who have been there for decades hmm. who are citizens, who are voting, and, and I'll tell you, it's not always that immigration is their, their central concern. That's that's interesting, Daniel. What what else? What do you do? The general dynamics on the ground that you're seeing when you go to these rallies are these people who are curious? Are they just like pro burn? They've always been with Bernie. That's one of the things that people are trying to look at is who are the is he bringing, is he bringing the promised new voters into the process uh, based on the discussions that you've had with them? It's such a hard thing to measure. And again, the courtship. Uh, I'll just give you some stats about Latinos in Iowa. Their estimates. It, you know, it, it's a classic demographic group where they're trying to bring new or infrequent voters into the process. And it's 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 hard to, honestly, it's hard to tell from the polling. I can tell you that there are people turning up at these events who or who are telling me, I have never voted before, and by the way, I'm bringing my kids and, and everything like that. Um, but it, but it, it, it's like so much of what Sanders is trying to do here it's relatively unprecedented. People mm-hmm. say if anyone can do it in terms of an organizing capacity, it's him because he surprised people in 2016. They have a very well-oiled field operation. And in terms of the Latino stuff, it's very interesting. They have Chuck Rocha, who's a Mexican-American guy, second or third generation from Texas. And he basically figured out what he identifies as 68,000 United States citizens, registered voters, who are Latino in the state of Iowa. Mind you, he does use the term Latino instead of Latinx, uh, which he calls the the broadest possible uh, lexicon. And he said to me, we we think that 1,800 of those 68,000 people have caucused in a Democratic caucus before. Hmm. Wow. And and so nine, like a a tiny fraction. Mm -hmm. And so nine months ago, they started going on to the Spanish language uh, weekly newspapers and placing for a, a full page ad for $8,000, which again, not very much. Uh, they've got, obviously they've got their own organizers in these communities. They obviously have an immigration reform platform. And I heard Jane Sanders speak about it more frankly than I heard anyone else, including many of the Latino speakers uh, yesterday. But the core message, the core thing that they're doing is basically just taking his economic message, translating into Spanish and bringing it into sort of these, these, um, you know, into into the proper channels, into the proper community channels with the proper surrogates, proper newspapers, digital radio ads, things like Atención Médica por Todos, right? You know, medical attention for all, uh, Universidad um, por Todos. Like, so it, it's very much a class-focused message and mm. for a, a demographic group that is is generally more blue-collar. That's very interesting. That is fascinating. I mean, look, Chuck is a great friend yeah. of this show. He's detailed some of their efforts to reach out to this community, in particular in Nevada and California, um, but we'd never heard him detail what they were doing on the ground in Iowa. So it's fascinating that this could be a sort of key unnoticed uh, voting block. And I know you're writing about this, Daniel. Where can people check this out once it posts? Of course, at HuffPost.com. And you could go to Twitter.com slash Daniel Marins. Uh, that's M-A-R-A-N-S. Great. All right. Always we a were great follow check it on out. that platform. Thank you, Daniel. Really appreciate it, man. Thanks, Daniel. Great to see you. Enjoy. All uh, right. You're very welcome. Take care. Coming up, how do the supporters of the two front runners in the 2020 race view capitalism and socialism? We're going to look at the latest polling. That is next.